Let's talk about nuclear fission. Nuclear chemistry is a very interesting uh, part of the chemistry curriculum. Unfortunately, it's a part that sometimes gets pushed to the side in when uh, you know, it comes at the end of the year and, and time becomes uh, of the essence or there are time pressures and so on. And so nuclear chemistry kind of gets pushed to the side a little bit. But it's a shame because it's very interesting. And it's useful for students to know about. I mean, we, we do live in a society where we need everybody to be informed of issues. And one of the ways they get informed is through their high school science classes. Um, and so we're going to demonstrate uh, two different things here today. We're going to demonstrate a chain reaction, but basically two ways. Now, usually when you think of a chain reaction, uh, you know, it's, it starts and then it keeps on going. It's self-sustaining. But when you're talking about nuclear fission, which is the splitting apart of a very large uh, nucleus into smaller nuclei, uh, the chain reaction can be of several different types. Um, and so what we're going to do is demonstrate, first of all, what's called a critical process and then a supercritical one. And then we'll talk about what the difference is. We'll look at the equation for it and so on. But as with a lot of things, it's best to start with the demonstration of it. So I think we're going to go ahead and do that. What we've got up here are two sets of dominoes. We're going to play a little bit today in chemistry class. We've got two sets of dominoes, and they're set up in two different patterns. The first pattern is is a simple chain. It does have a couple of loop-de-loops in it, but otherwise each domino is going to hit the next one in our chain. And that will be one type of chain reaction because once it starts, we're not going to be able to stop it. So um, I've got somebody here who's going to start the timer as soon as I uh, knock down the first domino. So on your mark, get set, go. Okay, stop. And that was three seconds? Is that right? Just about. Three seconds. Okay. So that was a, a, a critical process. One domino hit the next, hit the next. So one after the other. What I've got here is another setup of dominoes, but this time I've arranged them in a rather intricate pattern. I know, can we see that in the audience well? Can we focus on that a little bit? Is that good? Can we see that? OK. And basically what you want to look at here is that, and this basically is, we have this set up on the board, as, uh, on the bench top as well. What is going to happen here is that each domino hits two other dominoes. So now we're going to go what's called supercritical. So when I hit one domino right in the middle, it's going to hit two. Those two are each going to hit two, and so on. And so that's going to multiply out. Did we catch that pretty well, do you think? OK, so if we saw what that looked like, we're going to go ahead and try to time this one. Now here we got to be really good. You've got, you're back down to zero time. Mm -hmm. OK, and I'm going to hit this one right here in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. That'll be good. OK, on the count of three. One, two, three. How long did that take? Not even a second, because I. <laughs> so we had a critical process here in three seconds and a supercritical process in one second. And that's about right for that, right? OK, so we've knocked all our dominoes down. Actually, there are three left standing. <laughs> So uh, it takes a while to, to set up that pattern, but it's a real fun thing to do. Students like it, and I guarantee if you do it once, the student, oh, can I set it up again? Let's do it again. I'll set it up. So I'm sure you'll get lots of volunteers to help. But let's talk about what's going on here. It's fun to do. Let's go through some of the nuclear chemistry in this case. So I'm going to go to the board here, and we're going to first of all, <laughs> but first of all, we're going to write the equation for the fission of uranium-235. The symbol for uranium-235 is U92-235. 92 is, of course, the atomic number of uranium, which is the number of protons. 235 
is the uh, mass number, which is the number of protons and the number of neutrons, and that's 235. Now, uranium actually comes in three isotopes. All of them are radioactive, 232, 235, and 238. And that's another way of writing the isotope of uranium. Naturally occurring uranium only uh, contains about less than 1%, about 0.7% of the U-235, which is the primary fissionable isotope. Remember we said that fission is the splitting apart of the nucleus. So in the splitting apart of the nucleus of uranium, 235, it actually requires a neutron. And this is not a high energy neutron, but a relatively low energy neutron. It's the uranium 235 is bombarded with a neutron source. And so we're going to write here the symbol for a neutron. A neutron, of course, has zero charge and has a mass of one atomic mass unit. When that splits apart when the neutron hits the uranium. There are several different pathways for fission. So you can look these up and you'll find several different equations. I'm going to write one possible equation for the fission of uranium, and that's to give barium plus krypton plus three neutrons. Now barium is always 56 is its uh, atomic number. Krypton is always 36. This is, and these mass numbers can vary a little bit. Sometimes you'll see these, and instead of having barium-141 being produced and krypton-92, it'll be barium-139 and krypton-94. Those are variable number of neutrons. I'm going to uh, just go back here, because what I want to do is talk about what makes this a chain reaction, okay? And if you look at this, what you see is that you have neutrons that are required to initiate the reaction, but neutrons are also produced. Now, of course, what I haven't written down here is the tremendous energy that's released in a nuclear process like this. We're going to talk about the scale of that a little bit. But the fact that you have neutrons being produced and neutrons that are required, you can immediately see that why that becomes a chain reaction. Now, it looks like that would be, you know, three neutrons. So each one would start one and you would get three more because each neutron would be able to start another fission event, which is the splitting apart of the large uranium uh, nucleus. But in fact, not all of those neutrons are going to be able to be uh, absorbed by the uranium-235. They may be dissipated. They may be absorbed by some other material. So when we talked about a critical versus a supercritical process there, if the net number of neutrons produced is less than one neutron produced per initial neutron that bombards it, then you're not going to be able to sustain a chain reaction. That's called subcritical. If you have, on average, one neutron that is able to initiate another fission event, then that's called a critical process. Now, that's the type of nuclear fission that is used in nuclear reactors, okay? So what they have to do in nuclear reactors is control the amount of neutrons that become available to start another fission event. And they do that with what are called control rods. And they can vary the depth to which they put those control rods into the, uh, with the fuel rods and so on to control that because obviously it's very important that that not go super critical. So if you have one neutron produced that can initiate and can be absorbed by a 235 and that will sustain the chain reaction, that's called critical. Super critical, of course, is what is used in nuclear explosives. And in that case, you have to be able to get, on average, more than one neutron released that can then be absorbed and initiate another fission event. And so that's a little bit about nuclear fission. Let's talk about the energy in those processes. Um, the energy in nuclear chemistry in fission or is about 
20 million times greater than the amount of energy that's released in, let's say, the combustion of natural gas. Okay? So you can see a tremendous source of energy. It has to be controlled. It is controlled in nuclear reactors. And uh, the issues that need to be addressed in terms of dealing with spent fuel and so on are issues that we as a society need to, be a, need to address. And we can only do that, really, if everyone in society is, uh, um, has the knowledge uh, and the understanding of some of these processes. And so that's why I think it's critical, if you will, that you do t teach some nuclear chemistry. Students love to be engaged. They love to argue, <laughs> right? I mean, I've got teenagers, and the only thing they do with me is argue with me. Your and so if you, do some, if you talk about some of this chemistry in your classroom, the nuclear chemistry, what you're going to do is, is open up a discussion. You're going to get the students engaged, because they want to address the, they want to talk about these topics. They want to argue the issues with you. So I think it's a, an interesting topic. You can uh, have fun doing it as a demonstration, and this demonstration is a perfect way to lead into a discussion of the nuclear chemistry equations and so on. So nuclear chemistry, thank you.